Next on the Broadway show, put on the green light, The Great Gatsby comes to Broadway. I'm sitting down with Jay Gatsby himself, Jeremy Jordan. Plus, an incredible story of redemption with the Broadway return of Sarah Gettlefinger, one of the stars of Water for Elephants. I am my sin To no one there and an exclusive musical performance from the star of A Beautiful Noise, Nick Fradiani. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. It's The Broadway Show, and we're back with another big one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Stay gold, pony boy. We're celebrating another star-studded opening night on Broadway. The Outsiders is on Broadway. Of course, it is based on the iconic novel that we all know and love by S.E. Hinton. We hit the red carpet with the stars opening night. I am so honored to be a part of this family. I don't know, I can't say enough. I feel like I'm, you know, just, I've, I've been a little girl in awe of Broadway my whole life. I haven't even had the, the chance to even do it myself as an artist, and I couldn't do what these artists do on stage every night. I am very humbled by them, by this process, by what I've learned from what it is really to work on Broadway. I can't do what they do, right? They can act deeply, dramatically, authentically, and they can sing like nobody's business, and they can dance, and they've got me beat. If I had respect before, it has just multiplied when I under as I've come to understand really uh, the challenges, the differences of, uh, of a musical production on Broadway. To get to be an artist and get to do something I love that I'm truly passionate about, a story I really connect with, that doesn't come around all the time. And in a role like Pony Boy that is so, I mean, I sometimes say he's like the 14 year old, you know, Jean Valjean mixed with Melchior from Spring Awakening. It is like kind of that vibe. It's the dream role that I never knew I wanted. It's a true theatrical experience in the sense of like, it's the energy exchange of a concert, um, but then like the drama and the grit that a great film could bring, you know what I mean? And to be a part of something like that, again, it doesn't come around all the time. The audience energy has been insane. I'm not used to audiences like that. I was in Dear Van Hansen and we never got responses like that. People cheering outside of our windows and things like that. So I'm just taking it one stride at a time because I still have to play Johnny Cade for at least a year. So I'm really enjoying it. One of the greatest things that I love to remember is that this book, while it is about boys, was written by a girl. And it you can just taste it, you can feel it, you can feel the feminine energy in the boys. Like the way that they connect with their, their soul and their emotions, which is typically seen as feminine or or not masculine is it's really beautiful and it's it's an honor to be one of the only four female presenting people on the on the stage at one time and it's not lost on me the amount of weight that carries it's 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 really special If you like large parties, A Great Gatsby is on Broadway, the brand new musical based on the iconic novel by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I caught up with Jay Gatsby himself, Jeremy Jordan. How are you feeling about everything at this point? It's exciting. I mean, I stepped foot on the stage for the first time yesterday and like sang again on a Broadway stage. It's been a really long time for me since I've sung on a Broadway stage and it's been a long time since I've done an original show on Broadway. So it's, it's, uh, it still feels great every time. It's exciting. Well, what is it like to be back on a stage? It has, it has been a little bit, a little bit of time for you. Is it, is yeah. it a whole different learning curve for your brain or for your body or for what? Uh, you know, I don't know. We're going to find that out. But, um, you know, the, doing the eight shows a week for a long period of time, it's, it's been a minute since I've done that. As I, as I get a little bit older, I'm always looking for ways to, like, not hurt myself. <laughs> Before, <laughs> when I was younger, I just was just throw it all, all out there. And, you know, you wake up the next morning like, yeah, I'm fine. Doesn't happen like that anymore. <laughs> now you understand what eight shows a week means. <laughs> I know exactly. I'm like, oh, it's, it's a I, little different. I used to think that was not that big of a deal, but uh, and then I had a child that wakes me up early in the morning every day after getting home at you know 11 
plus at night. So you've done a lot of period pieces. I and mean, this is one though that, you know, written over a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about some big Hollywood, you know, heavyweights that have, that have been in this role before. So what, what do you want to bring to, what do you want to bring to this one? Yeah, I mean, you're first, creating your own heavyweight. Yeah, here. first of all, like I've stuck really to the book. Good. You know, uh, I don't know that I've ever seen the Robert Redford version, and I, I I know that I saw the the DiCaprio version many years ago. But uh, the thing that I've learned about myself, and I think a lot of people, is that when you see somebody else do an interpretation of the same character or the same work. Mm -hmm. It's just always there in the yeah. back of your mind, and it's harder to really make that fully your own. So, like, there's a couple things that I say in the show that I've heard DiCaprio say, yeah. and it's still really hard for me to like get his version oh, wow. of that like iconic line out of my head. And so, like, I try to remove myself from that and sort of create Gatsby from scratch in, in our in our own way. And the book is is told from a single perspective, which is one of the characters, the mm -hmm. character of Nick. Um, and so he really only can guess at the motivations of, of the other characters and, you know, their inner workings. And so that's where we get to kind of play and make discoveries and decide new things. My Gatsby, at least, my sort of first question was like, what kind of person would literally go to the ends of the earth and somehow become the richest person in Long Island over the course of a very short period of time just because he wants to get a girl. Like that kind of person is, is not the most stable human being. Yeah. You know, they're not the most rational of thinkers. He's a little bit neurotic. He's like a little bit, uh, you know, of a control freak. And, uh, and I think that ultimately ends up being his downfall, but it's really fun to kind of attack it from like, how does someone like that get to be this way? And, uh, and that's kind of where I started. And what's really cool is that because it's a musical, we have all these different styles at our disposal. So the music and the choreography and to a, a maybe slightly lesser degree, the sets and design mm -hmm. really bring in elements of modern sort of 2024 oh, wow. while still telling a story that's set back in 1922. And so we try to bridge the gap a little bit so it's not like you're watching something through a time capsule. It feels relatable, but it's also still, you know, Rel giving you the relevant. real story. It's another must-see show and another star-studded opening night on Broadway. Lempika comes to Broadway based on the life of the trailblazing Polish Art Deco artist. It stars Eden Espinoza and is directed by Tony Award winner Rachel Chafkin. We hit the red carpet with the star's opening night. I knew what we had was special. I knew we would find an audience. Um, it was just, I don't think people were ready to receive everything that this show has to offer until this moment in time. You need to be stronger than you are, stronger than you feel, be still. Our time. Walk into hell and back, if I can bring him back, walk out of this place alive. Our time. There's something about this work that wrecks me. It's seeing what this woman survived. It's seeing an artist who desperately wanted to make everyone around her live forever and couldn't. Um, it's what she did capture. And I'm like looking at our fabulous marquee and these forces of nature that she manifested on a canvas. Her capacity for style and for the sense of the epic was just kind of unparalleled. It's hard work, but it feels really good. Every night I go out and I just want to be proud of the work I'm doing and I want to work as hard as I can. And it, I love that it's not perfect every night because I get to come back the next day and try again. Like I'm, I feel like this musical is teaching me how to sing in a different way. It's so much fun to be challenged at work. And I feel like Limpika is really challenging me in a way that I needed to be pushed. I just want people to be moved, you know? And I think there's something for everybody in the show and a big epic sweeping musical like this we haven't had in a while. So I just want people to buckle up and enjoy the ride. It's time to go into the big top. Water for Elephants is now on Broadway. It's based on the best-selling novel and hit movie. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. 
Sarah Gettelfinger rose the ranks on Broadway for well over a decade starting in 2000, going from standout chlorine to acclaimed leading lady. Then she was gone, leaving fans like myself wondering what happened. Now that she's back in the new hit musical Water for Elephants, she's ready to share her incredibly personal story that found her facing her darkest days far from the lights of the stage. This is Water for Elephants. Yes. You're back on Broadway. I'm so thrilled to see you. Thank How does you. it feel this theater has a little history for you? Oh, for sure. Because you were in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, one yeah. of my favorite musicals. <laughs> so you you know all about birthing a new musical. Oh, absolutely. At the Imperial Theater. Yes. <laughs> so how does it feel to be back here? It is unbelievable. It's surreal. Um, it was equal parts this incredible start of a second chapter, but also an unbelievably beautiful homecoming. Even when we took our first tour, you know, with, with yeah. this group, you know, some of the same crew that was there wow. from Scoundrels. And it was, it was really like just putting on a, your favorite old comfy sweater. And it was like, I am back where I feel at home and I belong and I love it. Let's keep walking. Yes. Let's go sit down. <laughs> we have more to talk about. The last big credit I remember you doing prior to uh, seeing you back on Broadway was you were Marticia Adams in the very big national tour of the Adams Family, which is a really good gig. And I think you were on the road for, was it a good year? Yeah, it was a year and change. And then I haven't seen you since. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in a good place mm. when I booked that show. That year of that Adams Family tour would sort of be after going from being a partier to very regularly using drugs and alcohol. I hit the end of the road of I'm not able to, not only is it not giving me those perceived superpowers that I thought it had as far as, you know, I have all this energy, I'm thin, mm -hmm. I can do anything, um, but it was crashing and burning big time. I know you just hit 11 years sober. Congratulations. Yes. How did that moment happen for you 11 years ago? My health was 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 really deteriorating. I was in the worst physical shape. And when I say the worst mental shape that I've ever been in, you know, just paranoia to where, you know, like I wasn't able to leave the house. I wasn't able to like just take care of basic things in terms of maintaining an apartment. And I had a very dear friend in Brooklyn that um, had been in the program. And I, there was, you know, just one evening where I, I literally felt like I, I very much in a, in a form of like a panic attack kind of thing. But I just remember taking a car to her apartment and just really saying, I, I can't do this anymore. And like, I, I can't, you know, and she said, give me your phone. We're gonna call your parents. It's time. And the next day, I, I flew home. I can't imagine how difficult that was. Yes, it was. It was heartbreaking, and it was heartbreaking for them. Um, you know, we it wasn't our family's first rodeo with addiction, just in tar terms of genetics and things like that. But I also think that there was some relief in it because I, I think they knew that I wasn't well. There's nothing like being, you know, the golden girl who's, you know. Broadway darling and then after the fall from grace, you know, trying to go shopping in a grocery store and literally having people pointing and whispering and you know, it's like everybody knew about it. When you step on a stage and you hear the, the roar of the audience, right? It's a classic Broadway showbiz moment. Does it mean something different for you now? I actually view the curtain call as a thank you to the audience because I love what I get to do every night regardless. And I feel gratitude to them that because they've shown up, I get to step out there and tell this story and do what I love. There's so much more to Sarah's incredible journey back to the Broadway stage, including a second addiction, not a relapse, but a new addiction brought on by medications prescribed by her doctor, followed by an arrest, a suicide attempt. And finally, redemption in the form of newfound love and family and the unlikely events that led her back to the Broadway spotlight.
I hope you can check out my full interview with Sarah Gettelfinger, one of the stars of Water for Elephants, over at Broadway.com. For The Broadway Show, I'm Paul Wontorek. The Broadway Show is back in just a sec. Hi, I'm Rachel McAdams, and you are watching The Broadway Show. Takes a whole lot of people to keep a Broadway show running, from the stars on stage to the orchestra in the pit, and all the people behind the scenes whose names you don't always see in a playbill. Our man Perry is on the town. Thanks, Campson. As they say, props is tops, and Eric Stewart agrees. I'm headed inside the Winter Garden Theater before a performance of Back to the Future to talk to their head of props. So now we are here on the stage of the Winter Garden Theater with the head of props, Eric Stewart. Eric, thank you so much for the time today. I know you're very busy. We got to yeah, get going soon. Yeah, uh, let's do it. We want to show you guys around on what we do for preset for the show. What exactly does you know head of props entail for your workday? So today on Wednesdays we do uh, a maintenance call in the morning before the matinee. So we uh, the whole crew was in at 8 a.m. today, really just doing general maintenance and upkeep. We had a big project on one of the docks lab units today the for the props today. department we worked on some of our 50s benches as they're testing the sound system uh, we worked on some of our white benches we worked on our cafeteria tables gosh we did all kinds of little things putting some hooks up covering some sinks we did all kinds of things today so it's not just you know ah the show's done like running and go there there is maintenance and then continues all work kinds every of maintenance day. yeah perfect well i know we're getting we, we can hear it happening right now we're getting ready for showtime do you mind if i join you on your That's walk good. around so first thing we'll do we'll head this way so with the show set in two such distinct time periods, but also, you know, based on a movie that is known and loved, how hard is it to replace or, or edit things to, to make them match both the, the time period and, you know, the source material? Well, um, we do a lot of shopping on eBay. <laughs> really? um, yeah, for a lot of our 50s and 80s props. This is a, a vintage 80s uh, camcorder that we've had to repair a few times, which unfortunately has taken a couple falls backstage. Oh, geez. Uh, in finding a uh, replacement of this uh, has been a challenge. We found one in the UK that was shipped over that got held in customs Oh no! that uh, is now lost to customs so we're in the process of trying to find another one. Here we are at the DeLorean. We made it. We made it. <laughs> one of the things that we do is uh, we air up the car. Um, there are pneumatic knives uh, that lock the car into uh, tracks in the floor that are air controlled. We are in charge of uh, basically all the aesthetics on the car. So anything that looks nice or pretty, we're in charge of. But there's also uh, electrics, because the car lights up. Automation fault is in there too. So it's uh, props, carpentry, and electrics all, and sound. There's uh, speakers in the car as well. When they are ready for the car, we will push the car out. Well, look, I, I gotta get out of your way. We're, uh, we're out of time, as we like to say. You're a part of this show. You've been so many roles in the industry, but I gotta ask you, what does Broadway mean to you? It's, uh, I mean, this really is kind of the pinnacle of industry. This was where I always wanted to end up working. So the fact that, that we're here now and have been for the last 10 years has been uh, kind of a dream come true. You've got just a few months left to check out A Beautiful Noise, the Neil Diamond musical. The show is wrapping up its run at the end of June and Nick Fradiani plays Neil Diamond. Lays fine, the sun shines most of the time. And the funeral's laid back. Palm trees grow and rents are low, but you know, I keep thinking about it, making my way back. Well, I'm New York City, born and raised, but nowadays I'm lost between two shores. LA's fine, but it ain't home. New York's home, but it ain't mine no more. I am, I said, to no one there. And no one heard at all, not leaving the chair. I am, I cried 
I am, said I. And I was lost and I just couldn't say why. Leaving me lonely still. We want to remind you about our latest vlog over at Broadway.com. It's called Step Right Up, courtesy of the star of Water for Elephants, Isabel McCalla. Watch the full episodes over at Broadway.com. And that's going to do it for us. But for tickets or if you want to check out extended cuts of all these interviews, head over to Broadway.com. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.